do the sex. Hi, this is Annette Benedetti, your hostess for Locker Room Talk and Shots, the podcast that likes to think of itself as the queer NPR of raunchy women's sex talk. You are about to sit in on the kind of conversations women have on their girls' nights out or behind closed doors while enjoying delicious drinks and dishing about sex. Think fun, honest, and feminist as fuck, and always with the goal of fighting the patriarchy one orgasm at a time. Welcome to the locker room. <laughs> Ring loop. Today's locker room talk and shots topic reboot is what is pegging and how to get started with two of my favorite guests, Lucy, Russian dominatrix Lucy, you love her, you know her, you know she knows all about this stuff, and Deanna, aka Ruby. Both of them, having had lots of experience, guide us from discovering exactly what pegging is to how to get started and do it if you or your partner is interested or curious. We also answer some key questions from listeners along the way. So if you stay tuned and listen all the way to the end, you will be ready to strap one on and give it to him tonight. Cheers. We're talking about pegging today and I've got my guests Deanna and Lucy here. Our guest Deanna, who's here today, actually was part of the episode, the first episode of season two, which was about moms who like to bang, moms who like to fuck, not MILFs, but moms who actually like to get dirty in the sack. Right, Deanna? Oh, yes. It was a fun conversation. It was so fun. And Lucy, Lucy, who is best known as the, maybe not best known, but is known to our listeners, the look she gave me who is known to our listeners as the Russian dominatrix. This is a perfect topic for you. And what is, what's your favorite episode you've been on in the past, Lucy? I feel like they're all fantastic. (laughs) Right, right. Toys, toys, toys is my favorite one you've been on because you brought a spreadsheet of the toys. (laughs) Indeed. I brought some samples today as well. Yeah. Pictures for future. So... The shot for today's episode is the spicy butt crack, and it tastes like Halloween. It is a damn good drink, if I do say so myself. It is a locker room talk and shot special. That's right. I did a lot of research, and this cocktail is a twist on one I found, Um, and it's a locker room talk and shots podcast special and you can find the rep- recipe if you head over to our website at lockerroomtalkpodcast.com where all of our episodes and all of our recipes are posted. So let's raise our glasses. You guys ready for the spicy butt crack? Let's do this. Let's talk about pegging. Delicious. And it's so good. Surprisingly delicious. Yes. Surprisingly delicious and strong. So very we, good. We'll be careful with it today. Um, one of the first things that I think we need to address about pegging is what it is before we launch into our conversation. So, and you guys can tell me if you agree, I researched ahead of time and pegging, it seems to specifically, for the most part, refer to um, sex between heterosexual couples where the woman wears a strap on and penetrates the male's anus um, in an act of sex where the woman basically fucks the man via their back end, their butthole. (laughs) (laughs) Anal sex with a strap on. Yes. Right. But between and between yes. heterosexual people or oh. I mean, I could see it bisexual, but it's it's not. Yes. The woman is wielding the penis and the gentleman is taking the penis, taking the penis. Right. Correct. All right. All right. So there you go. Guy, guys, go. That's that's in case you're wondering what pegging is. That is your definition. One oh one pegging. Very clean and clear. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I think I just want to do a little round, quick round table. Um, Maybe each of you can take a turn 
talk a tiny bit about your experience pegging and and how you feel about it. Let's start with you, Deanna. Are you an experienced pegger? I mean, I don't know if I call myself a professional, but I have had experience pegging. Mm -hmm. I almost think it might have been more enjoyable for me than them. Mm -hmm. Um, The person you pegged. mm -hmm. Because it gave a whole uh, new sense of empowerment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like having full control. I think sometimes when we have sex with men, even if they say they're giving us control, there's still that feel of kind of that male domination. Right. Um, And I think with pegging, there's no way they can take any control of it. Like, you are fully in control. Right, right. With their consent, of course. Yes, of course, with their consent. Right, right. So, Lucy, I assume you've done it more than once. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Time or two or 20 or over the years. (laughs) Many times. Many times. Um, But, yes, I I agree with Deanna. Um, I think it is such a empowering activity that it is almost like it kind of blows your mind you're in such control and it's so just exhilarating yeah uh, to do it and and um it's not even the pleasure necessarily of it it's definitely the mental pleasure of it not so much the physical obviously because you're not actually really getting anywhere right uh when you when you peg someone unless you have one of those fancy strap-ons that also attaches a hitachi magic wand to it and then right. it's so much more fun so i i should be transparent now you know the expertise of our guests i have never officially pegged a man a partner i have definitely participated in butt stuff which will be another podcast, but I have never donned a dick and dove in all the way. So I'm actually excited about this podcast and I have my own questions. But in my research, I did find that there were strap-ons that included like powerful vibration for her Mm -hmm. pleasure while she was giving, Mm -hmm. is giving him pleasure. Right. So none of us have tried that yet. Yes. Yes, you have. So the harness I had actually, or I still have, has a pocket for a bullet clit stimulator. Yeah, for a bullet. <clears throat> oh, nice. All right. Here's a question that comes to my mind right away. So everyone at the table is bi, correct? Correct. We're all bisexual women. Cheers to bisexual women, by cheers the way. Cheers to that. Cheers, cheers. So then how would you say... Does the equipment differ from the strap-on experience with another woman versus, like, are they the same strap-ons? Deanna's nodding. Well, honestly, I don't, the, I think the bullet really doesn't come in play when pegging a man. You don't usually use the bullet on And I think it has, like Lucy said, it has a lot to do with, it's more about kind of that mental stimulation Mm -hmm. rather than physical. It's a whole... It's a power play. Yeah. Like with a woman, it's about more the physical pleasure. I mean, there's always some mental... Like, I always have to have some mental turn on whenever I'm with anyone. But with pegging, I actually prefer... Pegging a man, I prefer not having... The vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Lucy? Definitely the mental high that you get from just doing it is is lovely. But also when you do have an orgasm while pegging, my partner finds that exceptionally exciting. So that is more for them as well, not just me. Right. Like just the fact that I can get off while pegging them. Right. It's just so exciting for them as well. So also a mental thing. Yeah. So I guess uh, uh, my bringing up like the difference between, uh, between penetrating a woman and penetrating a man is, is kind of an off question because the power play dynamic with a man is absent when you're, when you have the strap on with a woman. Do you see what I'm trying to wrap my Mm -hmm. mind around? I'm trying to differentiate 
pegging a man from using a strap on. With yeah, a woman. it's not the same at all because no. with a woman, you're not, there is no power play mm-hmm. necessarily unless it might have been agreed upon previously. But it's it's definitely people are in it for the pleasure and, and the excitement of the activity where it's for pegging situations. Right. It is definitely more a power dynamic that you were looking Between for. Between heterosexual couple. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> this is how it kind of becomes like a very heterosexual activity. For sure. Um, which is one thing like I really wanted to, and why I've named this podcast pegging and the patriarchy is, um, as as I was doing my research, I learned some really cool stuff. And I think, by and large, people are aware that um, men have a prostate that is very sensitive. I don't think people understand, though, it's often throughout at least the literature I was reading, it's equated to it's it's equated to being the equivalent of the woman's G spot for a man. So I found that fascinating. But the thing that I found super sad about it is that there is a misconception and a myth that if a man wants to be pegged or be anally penetrated, it means he's gay or bi or, you know, uh, flexible, which is not at all true. Um, And so it keeps a lot of men from uh, being willing to be vulnerable enough to, you know, participate in pegging, which then means they don't get to experience an orgasm via their G spot. And I mean, it's such um, an interesting light to shine on how the patriarchy, which is inherently not only racist, but homophobic, keeps even men from fully enjoying their sex life and, and feeling comfortable in who they are, how, you know, who who they are in bed and what they want in bed. For sure. Um, I definitely have also like, I guess I was lucky to have a companion who is so adventurous in all the things that we do, um, in the bedroom. But yes, I feel like a lot of the time men are, so concerned about their the power dynamic like they mm-hmm. do not want to lose the power and yet because they think it's emasculating exactly mm-hmm. but yet i am on quite a few reddit subgroups and all these men on them are like yes please someone anyone i would like somebody to peg me and i would like somebody to um a, a woman to give my power away to so i can be vulnerable and be um on the receiving part of all sorts of attention that is considered non-masculine. Right. But it is... completely masculine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's nothing more empowering than to give the power away. Like, the Mm -hmm. fact that you are so trusting of whoever you are engaging in interactions with, that you are willing to just surrender to the activity or the... It is empowering. Or at least it should be. And I think, um, you know, something that's equated with masculinity is bravery. And I think there's nothing more braver than being vulnerable. Right. Like For that sure. takes a lot of courage. And so that's absolutely why wouldn't that be masculine to do? Right. Like that's the utmost bravery you can show is being that, as Deanna. vulnerable as you can as a man. I love that. I love that uh, perspective. I think the other thing that I came across during and, and which resonated with me, though I have not pegged, I've definitely had partners that have been open to being penetrated during our interaction together. And it is like there is something women are kind of expected to be vulnerable, obviously, to men allowing in, you know, these heterosexual relationships, allowing them to enter you. Um, and oftentimes in the heterosexual dynamic, the, the man's expected to be dominant. The woman's expected to be submissive and like hand over control. And that is like this act that is a vulnerability that bonds a, cu- a couple, right? Handing over this trust to a man. But why would it not be the same in reverse? 
right? To have a man hand over, you know, trust and be vulnerable with you. It it is it intensifies your connection and your love for one another other. So I would even say, I would venture to say, and this is gonna blow some people's mind, that pegging is fucking romantic. Ooh, Ooh cheers, cheers to, to that. that. Mm-hmm. Masculine and romantic. Not that I have fully experienced it again, but <clears throat> I have goals. Hashtag goals here. <laughs> so another interesting thing I found out is that every person, regardless of gender, has thousands of nerve endings in their anus that contract and release in pleasure every time you orgasm. When you orgasm, your little sphincter is working overtime down there. <laughs> All of us, women, men, guys, if you are a man who is heterosexual and you're just like, no way, uh-uh, my asshole's out only. All right, that's fine. But your little butthole, it says different every time you orgasm. That old guy is like, come on, <laughs> give me some attention. <laughs> I thought that was a really interesting uh, fact there. It is. So cheers to the happy orgasming anus. Oh, little happy butthole. Little guy. Little guy. Mm. So here's something fun. In our Facebook group, Locker Room Talk and Shots Happy Hour, our members get to ask us questions when they know that a podcast is coming up and we let them know that we were going to be talking about pegging and we have a member Liberty who has several questions. Um, and we're going to choose a couple that we feel like should be answered by us on this podcast. So Deanna, can you read off maybe one of your top like questions that you think we should be answering here? Um, how about how do I know if he's interested in it? That's a great question. You are in a relationship with a guy and you've been going down on him and maybe 69ing and like moving your fingers towards that butthole. Maybe he lets you touch it. Maybe he lets you get a little tip in and you're kind of like, <laughs> Hey, I want to take this to the next level. If you haven't spoken about pegging in advance like how would you guys start to approach it what I mean, what, what do you suggest you should speak about it in advance yeah yeah before you're in bed before before you're together if, like when when in a let's say in a relationship heterosexual relationship at what point do you bring up butt sex well i think when cuz you know at first in a relationship sex is kind of you're feeling each other out not everybody is up front with these are my kinks what are yours right so you kind of like push limits with each other each time but i think it's not a conversation to have during the act mm. but maybe if you're like i'm going to explore in 69 and you do a little butt play and you notice that he Spreads. doesn't stop He's... and say, what are you doing? He just goes or, with it. Or those knees drop just a little <laughs> farther apart. I mean, so after that encounter, you can say, so did you like that? Like, talk about it. Right. Say, that was something new I did. How did you feel about it? Would you be up for exploring it further? Like, mm -hmm. you can start the conversation that way. Um, but it's definitely not something, you know, in the moment to whip out your harness and go, hey. <laughs> you know or but... do and, and and deal with the fallout <laughs> you may as they, as they run through the door <laughs> and you're like come back oh, it's pink i don't know <laughs> right and it, i mean if you don't want to like be brave and kind of explore you can have a conversation when you know you all should you should always be talking to your partner about what feels good to them and you could say you know Use the fact that you were given on this podcast. You know, I was, I heard this podcast and it said, did you know that when you come, that you have all of these thousands and thousands of nerves and then that can start your conversations, then go, you know, how do you feel about exploring that? And yeah. Then, look, what, what we're trying to say is blame it on us. 
say, I got tied up. In, Seems legit, yes. In this <laughs> fucking weird <laughs> podcast with these like really weird, like kinky women. And they were bringing this thing up. How do you, f- I mean, like, how do you feel about it? Blame it on us. Also, you can just listen to the podcast with your companion as a precursor Ooh, yes. to yeah, your yeah. activity. Mm-hmm. Like, check out this podcast I'm listening to. Join me. Right. Yes. Right. And then you can discuss it later and see if any of you are into this activity. But yeah. Uh, so here's cheers to just learning how to conversate with your lover. Cheers for communication. Very important. Very important. All right. So here's a good question that's kind of a – it comes off of that that topic that Liberty brought up. Um, what if – because I've definitely been like early on in relationships with a guy um, and you kind of play with like bringing up butt stuff and they are just, you know, seem very closed off to it and you just want to be able to explore more. Do you think that you can push that conversation, push those boundaries in a way that allows your partner to be more open or do you think like when they put up that like no, it's just like no. I mean because you know that a lot of that has to do with the brainwashing right. of the patriarchy sure. saying like you well, ask them why. Like why mm-hmm. why why do you not want to explore this biological fact right that there is pleasure there for you right um and hopefully get curious, get curious. Yeah. they're in a trusting relationship with you where they can say well i mean i'm i'm not gay uh and then you can say well it doesn't mean you're gay it means that you are seeking pleasure which is a Sexy. human right right we all are seeking pleasure i love that for sure. I recommend buying butt plugs to start. In, to start and then saying, Hey, <clears throat> I have two of these. We should both try them and see where that goes. Oh. Right. Like make it a, a couple com- thing. a couple community activity where you throw one there, throw one there, see see where that goes. Butt, butt plugs everywhere. Butt plugs one everywhere. for you and you and you. It's like Oprah. <laughs> <Yes>. mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I like that you idea. Know, buy one in a funky color just for funsies. Rainbow. Can I put my vote in for um, suggestions for beginner butt plugs? Glass, gradual. Uh, there are glass butt plugs that have sort of a gradual. They're longer and they gradually get wider at the base. Holy shit. And Lucy just pulled out what a very soft, (laughs) squishy butt plug. This is interesting. It's good for men. It's it's a it's for manly men butt plug because it it, the curvature of it. You'll see a picture and on the wherever you hits the magical prostate spot Mm. and thus makes it more awesome. So right now, gripped firmly, being squeezed in my hand is. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe I need to. Is it like a stress ball? Yeah, it's like it's a stress ball. Very stress ball. I yeah. am holding a butt plug. I have never seen one like this before. I've seen one like that. Um, that it, it it feels like a stress ball. Um, it's quite quite girthy. Um, but sh- <laughs> short. I think it's a medium one. Yeah. This is medium. That's medium. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Um, no, so it's a we, butt plug. It's not Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will post pictures of these butt plugs that Lucy has brought. Um, that are uh, there's a variety. The one that I'm holding is squishy. Here, Deanna, you take Mine's it. I'm going to take yours. Oh yeah. And then there's one. <gasps> oh, see, and, and there's a black one that is actually firmer. These are short, and and what I like about them is they have a handle. Mm-hmm. You can really grip to pull it out when you need to. Um, The final (laughs) butt plug that I'm now holding, I now have two in my hands. Um, It's a rainbow butt plug, which I like. Mm -hmm. Although for men who really don't want to identify as anything but straight, this might be a bad choice. And it's sort of gradual, but it's also a little, it's softer than the glass ones I'm suggesting. Uh, So butt plugs are a nice entry into... um, (laughs) Eventually, 
<laughs> no pun intended, into eventually pegging, correct? Is that what I assume? Is that why? You, yeah. Yeah. You start with butt plugs and... And then see if that is an acceptable activity, and then you go from there. Right, right. I assume that, uh, and again, I've never pegged, I assume that the, uh, what do you call the penetration part of the pegging? So you've got the, so when you peg. It's like a dildo. Is is it a dildo? Do we call it that? Or is there a different name so that men feel more comfortable? No, it's a dildo. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a dildo. Yeah, it's just so the dildo I mean, part of the pegging. Oh, uh, there's a small one. Do you have a bigger one? Uh, Lucy has pulled out some oh dildos that would go on your um, strap on, and they want more. Dicks? You know, and look, here's the thing. This <laughs> is cool. One should always want more dicks. One should always want more dicks for sure. But what I think is really oh god, dicks falling everywhere. Uh, what's really cool about the two dildos I have in each of my hands is one does not look like a penis. And I would think for some men, this would be far more comfortable. It just looks like, uh, kind of a, a, it's like a hot dog. (laughs) Fun fact, fun fact, guys, when I was young in grade school and, um, we did sex education, I was in private Catholic school. During sex education, my mother decided to be the sex educator, which is hilarious looking back. When asked by one of the young girls who was like, well, how how does a penis look when it gets hard? Her response was, it's kind of like a hot dog. So here is what I would say about one of the dildos I was holding in my hand. It looks kind of like a hot dog, not at all like a dick, which might be more comfortable for Indeed. So, thank you. you know what? Cheers to, to butt plugs and dildos. <laughs> so many of them now. So, so many. many. All right. Moving moving on. What is a Liberty had some other good questions. Oh. I mean, she really she really came in hard with uh, a list of questions that were all important. Oh. What if he has hemorrhoids? <gasps> that is a good question. <sighs> Don't do loop. it. Oh, can, can you, Lucy, I want nothing. Did not have that experience yet. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had that experience, but thinking about anal sex. Mm -hmm. Right. And hemorrhoids. Have you had hemorrhoids while you had anal sex? I have. So you, it can happen. You just have to really lubricate. And be gentle Mm -hmm. and maybe choose a much smaller. I mean, fortunately for the man, you can choose a smaller dildo. I mean, I think with pegging, it would just be maybe go for the hot dog. Size toys, yeah. Yeah, the smaller hot dog size toy instead of the the dick-shaped one. Yeah. Yeah. Smoother, less ridges. Mm -hmm. And it's up to, you know, if it's too uncomfortable, of course... I would hope that they feel they could express that, whoa, 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 it's, that's not working. And then you just go on to other things. But it is possible with some finesse and care and lube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's great. That's great. So, hey, guys, from the beginning of this podcast, I mean, from its origins, from, from the first po- podcast, what have we said? Bring lube. So here's to lube. Cheers to lube. It makes all the fun things possible. Especially anal lube. Don't use non-anal lube. Oh, yes. Mm. Good point, Lucy. Let's, let's, let's talk, talk about Let's lube. talk about lube. Mm-hmm. Go take it away, Lucy. So definitely find the most anal lube you can. And so what is the anal? Is, there, is it a specific? It kind? is you yeah, you can definitely buy it it will say anal on the bottle. We actually have found anal lube that comes in a powder. Powder. And, yeah, and then you mix it with water and that and then it pretty much turns into this viscous substance. Yeah. Um that is amazing. It doesn't like go anywhere, it just kind of stays there. Which is super oh. nice. Mm-hmm. So there, there's water-based lube and there is silicone-based. Mm-hmm. Basically, you want the thicker. The thicker, the better. The one that kind of stays there, doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. 
more is more. More is mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. But they do have specific like lubes that are for anal play. So it says mm-hmm. anal, anal lube. Anal mm-hmm. lube. All right, guys. Anal lube. That's how you get through hemorrhoids and just maybe a tight butt. And mm-hmm. sometimes a butt is tighter and sometimes it's looser, right? It changes mm-hmm. by the day a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I'm just suspecting. For sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so being prepared for that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, so there you go. There's your answer to hemorrhoids. Um, one thing I want to talk about, I was a little bit surprised. So I have done a lot of research on women, um, anal sex, like from a female's point of view, like how to receive it. And then I was looking up articles on pegging and here's something I found very interesting that wasn't, I did not, at least in any of the articles about pegging that I read, um, they didn't address prep or like, uh, so in articles that I've read about how to get ready for anal sex, how to do anal sex for a woman, there's always that like, if you, if you don't want, um, poop to be an issue, how to prepare your, your buttocks, um, which is primarily by, um, doing an enema in, in, in advance. And this is not like uh, a full on enema, but you know, like kind of a lower tra- like tracks, like clean out so that you minimize the chance of being embarrassed by poop mm-hmm. because butts typically right. are used for poop when they're not being used for anal pleasure. Um, not in not one of the articles that I read and I read, I looked through, you know, on the, whatever was ranking on the first page of Google, they didn't bring it up when it came to pegging. That's unfortunate. I, mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, <laughs> well, that's interesting. I think something that probably uh, men as well as women feel very self-conscious about and will question that has to come up is what about poop? I guess I'm not surprised That there isn't anything about how to prepare to be pegged because, once again, we're talking about the patriarchy. We are talking about patriarchy. And we, as women, are always to prepare ourselves. And we have to be be clean. And pretty and pristine. And And men, you know what? If you pull out and some shit comes out, you just got to deal with it because I'm a man, baby. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, honestly, that's why it's not surprising to me right? that we don't have to have that same consideration we have to give men. Seems essential. Yes. Every article has something about lube, um, which is right. That's like 101 stuff. Mm-hmm. But I can't believe that men aren't as like interested or concerned about like that aspect of it. Um so I don't know, Lucy, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something prior to uh, pegging that, that you and your partner worry about? Or like, what are your thoughts? I mean, my partner is very courteous and does prepare for all for <laughs> right. such activities. And that and, is just being courteous, right? Yeah, and, and it wouldn't, I don't even think it wouldn't even occur to him to not to, because that has not come up right. over the years. He's like, hey, we're doing stuff. I'm like, all right. He's like, all right, I'll go prepare. I'm just like, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know. Right. As you should because, come right. on, just, you know, be mm-hmm. courteous to your, your female companion so she doesn't have to deal with any. That. Cheers yeah. to being courteous <laughs> to your female companion, guys. And his situation. Ugh. But also towels are your friend. Mm. Just in case. <laughs> Oh, yes. yeah, because no matter how much you prepare, right, you never mm-hmm. know. But also lube Shit and- happens. <laughs> ah! Bam. It does, actually. But also, yeah, just the lube is always stickier and, and things. Yeah, Have it's like a messy a stack act. of rags, I mean, sex- maybe, like, just towels. Sex is messy, guys. Mm-hmm. Sure. It just is. I think what would be really useful for listeners and people who are interested in pegging and curious about it is to talk about sort of... The approach. Let's say you've been given the green light to like give it a try. And your guy is like, 
you know, clearly timid about it. He's like, I'll give it a try. But he's like iffy about it. What are the steps that you would suggest in preparing and entering, entering, (laughs) preparing for (laughs) entry, preparing for entry? Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) It's a good way to put it. Um, I definitely think you should prepare with the cleaning portion first. So you start with that. So you just talk to him about like that part of it. Mm -hmm. Like I read, or this is what I do before you fuck my ass. Because Mm -hmm. let's be honest, guys, you know, by the time you get to that, your guys try to bang you in the butt at least once. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you... I mean, it also inquires, like, how is your digestive health been? <laughs> Have you had a salad recently? How about when was uh, the last time you had a bowel movement? Yes, per- exactly. All these very important questions. So none of this is coinciding with your yes. activity. Um, and then definitely I would say you start with a butt plug to let everything Get Warm up. kind of used to the whole situation, and you can start with a small, small one, and then right. do go you up do one. you like do you like jerk them off while you put the butt plug in? Like, how about that? Like, here's a good question. Yeah, what about like how do you make it pleasurable right off the bat? Do you warm them up with a blowjob? Do you what have you guys done to get to that point where he's like, all right, he's stimulated enough? Because I know on myself before I move into allowing someone to like get to my butt, I'm like, you have to have me really turned on. And then I'm like, okay, let's play. Let's explore. What? So whatever. I mean, maybe. I mean, don't just go in cold, right? Uh, well, no, there's four. I mean, the way to think about yeah. it is think about, all right, when I'm going to be penetrated anally. What what would I like? Do I want someone just to shove their dick in my ass? No. Or, you know, do I want to have some intimacy and, you know, arousal and connection? And so I think foreplay is really important. And it, I mean, not necessarily give him a blowjob because that might not be what he wants. Like maybe just some passionate making out might be enough to get them there but just like with yourself you know no cues and if you don't know cues ask ask like that's the thing i think people <clears throat> miss out on a lot is they tend to be tight-lipped during intimacy And really, you should never stop communicating. Like, you should always be communicating. And, um, you know, so communicate. Like, are you ready for that butt plug? Wait, wait. Do you put your... Do you put your strap on on prior to even starting? Or is that something that happens during... Like, do you work up to putting it on after you know... Yeah. When do you put your strap on on? It depends on the situation. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it is exciting to just have it on as a precursor, mm-hmm. when other times you put it on later as mm-hmm. your activity progresses, because it is not necessarily the most comfortable thing to just no. kind of walk around in. It is right. Not. No. Do you feel sexy wearing it? Yes. Yes. You feel sexy wearing it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, and if you have like a very nice gentleman, he might give you a yep. your strap on a yeah. small blowjob. Yep. Wait. Okay. Can we talk he about might. that? Can we? Because I might, that yes. is interesting. It. So tell me about that. I think it's also a power dynamic mm-hmm. play for sure, especially if you are um, doing that and mm-hmm. having them kind of service you the same way you do for them. Yeah. Especially boring. if it's. I mean, sometimes it's really for them about that being dominated thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you tell them to suck your dick, that that turns them on. That's what you say to them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it's 
quite exciting. Yeah. For, for everyone for involved. For all parties involved. <laughs> the smiles <laughs> on these women. Yes. I mean, that is something uh, that I think that people don't realize is this is very exciting to women. Like, For sure. If you are a heterosexual man and you have all sorts of weird feelings around this, ultimately, I would think that what brings you the most pride and feeling masculine uh, and, and like a good lover is when you – get your woman off and excite her mm -hmm. and like just watching you guys talk about it like the smiles and like you know it's clear it's excite an exciting experience mm. and also if your gentleman companion is still a little on the iffy side of the whole situation and doesn't necessarily want to be pounded you can offer the option of a ride instead mm -hmm. where you can yeah. just be on the bottom and they can be on top of you mm -hmm. and then they have a, a lot more control. Rather to... than, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So positions, we're getting... Positions, All right, yeah. so we are get, let's talk about... First of all, cheers to like women getting off on this. This is as much yeah, as no, how it's... awesome is it for men to get off on it? But um, the, w women just mm -hmm. really getting off on it. Mm. Yes. So let's talk about positions. Um, yes. Obviously, I think the one that comes to mind first off is like doggy style, meaning uh, the man this time is bent over and you're mm -hmm. behind him. Mm -hmm. um, but what are some other positions you mentioned? On the, yes, just on top, mm -hmm. writing the said penis that you <laughs> provided right. or, or hot dog, whatever. <laughs> and, you know, that's a good starting mm -hmm. position. Wait, which, which is? The, them top. writing. Really? That is not Because what I they, they can ease into it how they're comfortable. Because mm -hmm. when you're behind, it's really hard to tell exactly the comfort level. So if you start that way, you might start a little too much. Yeah. Much. But if they are writing you, mm -hmm. they can kind of ease into that. And so I think that's the best starting position. For sure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So then what's another one that really has worked? Um, yeah, just the bent over one definitely works. Mm -hmm. um, you obviously have to account for height. Um, yes. I recommend pillows or wedges, depending on if you have any sexy time furniture. Um also, I assume you do have sexy yeah. time. <laughs> yes. Of course. I mean, Lucy I'm just going to say, not everybody has sexy time furniture, Lucy. Yeah, you should that get it. It's great. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, Here is to sexy time furniture. May I have some Sundays soon? Thinking mention everything. Um, but yes. <laughs> um, pillows to get your height to the correct Height, definitely inquire how they're feeling. Um, you can also do it kind of missionary position with them mm -hmm. being obviously the normal way up. Um, I, I also do like the edge of the bed for that one because it, my bed is a good height, so it's quite convenient. Explain that. What do you mean? Edge of the bed? I cannot. Oh, so you are standing and they are on the edge, edge of, of the, the bed. bed. Oh. Um, also... Perhaps stretch your glutes, ladies. Oh, this yes. This is quite a, a workout. workout. Mm -hmm. um, so pegging is quite a workout. Very oh, much God. so, yes. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Let mm -hmm. me tell you, my first time I was not prepared. <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like hips can lock. Like you can get injured. Be like super mindful <laughs> of what you're trying to do. Um, so the the perk, another perk for men is that women have the opportunity to see what you guys go through, what kind of workout you guys go through when you are banging us and we expect you to go harder, faster. <laughs> Wait, don't come yet. I want to go longer. <laughs> exactly. Slow down. And, yeah. and suddenly we are in that position and we're like, Holy, your back, your lower back. I mean, I only know this from wearing a strap your on with abs women. Abs are on fire. Oh, it's a good mm -hmm. workout. Yeah, you can't walk the step, the stairs. Right, the ridiculous. Your thighs are on fire mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, but yes, yeah, so those are some of the positions. Um, yet again, height depending. You can do just um, against the wall, or if you have a yoga swing, those are fun too. 
Um, <laughs> All right, go, Back Lucy. to the sexy time furniture. <laughs> what, I have a yoga swing. It's totally for yoga. Um, yes. You don't do yoga. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> sexy time yoga. Same thing. Um, and then, help me out here. Am I, I think I got most of yeah, it's like, I mean, <laughs> she's like, wait, I will write these down. Hold on. <laughs> She surpassed me. Yeah. I am. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one mm-hmm. of the fun facts about Lucy, uh, we kind of mentioned before, and I do think I still have a video of it, is Lucy has a sex equipment spreadsheet. If you see it on her <laughs> computer, you have to scroll. It's you it forever. It's 140. Wait. It's way more than that. <laughs> no, so probably be, between probably 100 200 something. Something. No. Yeah. <laughs> She has quite uh, – so she – because she has so many toys, she yeah, she just drank to that drink. I'm drinking to Lucy's <laughs> spreadsheet. And I have a spreadsheet, just like all the equipment. I'm so jealous. Um, also, for – back to penises really quickly and lube also really quickly. The Bad Dragon, it is actually a website that sells quote-unquote dragon penises – Mostly because they're just funky shape. But one of the things that I, it comes in all colors and quite a few sizes up to ridiculous, which I think is this big. Um, when she says this big, it's, it's, like, it's like she's looking at two feet? A foot and like a half. Foot. foot. Okay. Don't buy that one. But some of their penises come with a cum tube in the penis, mm-hmm. um, which is actually quite nice for anal sex because you can administer more lube oh genius yes all right to I need the you procedure to, like process. diana gets it right away i'm like what so talk me through this lucy <laughs> so there is a um pretty much it's trying to simulate like a coming of a like you come, penis penis right. yes except but, for, a, for a woman mm-hmm. right. but there's just a tube in the middle of the dildo which you can um use a syringe to add more lube as the penis is inside wherever do you, you like you put it do you how do you <laughs> how do you get it anal. to ejaculate are there balls full you, of lube or like whether you squeeze or what um you, you, unfortunately it does it's not that cool of a feature but i it, it comes with a syringe so you can just add it as you go okay yeah so it's not i don't know yeah i'll have to look at it i'm curious yeah. it's um it's definitely a neat feature because sometimes uh, your companion is like hey Need some more lube, and instead of just removing everything and adding more lube, and then you can working just it back in, throw some lube as you go. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's one thing too to mention is that uh, during anal sex, just yanking the dick out or the um, whatever dildo out and putting it back in is. It's not a quick a quick thing you do. You have to be very gentle for about, sure about both removing, and so I think <clears throat> that's something to be aware of. Uh, is this is a gent you know this is a gentle activity at first at least until you both get to know what works for you and is safe. You can hurt your partner doing oh, this sure. by oh, yes. being careless, and I I cannot express that enough. Whether Anal sex through pe- pegging is woman to man, which I think it's a little bit more dangerous in the sense that we don't have penises. We don't regularly insert our said cocks into someone. So um, there is a little bit of like get to know what that feels like. If you're not bisexual, like all of us are, where so we have um, experienced strap on sex with a woman. If you have never had strap on sex and you don't know like how to insert yourself being like obviously not a real bodily appendage into mm-hmm. someone else like it is something you need to take time with learn what works for your partner and especially if you're like it's a first time with your guy and he hasn't had anal play before you have to be very careful uh, because you can tear and hurt mm-hmm. um just as can happen to a woman so and you don't have like that flesh 
with feeling so you can sense kind of what's going on in there. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when someone tenses up, if like I man, have a penis, can tell, right. yeah, they can, and they're like, oh, are you okay? Right. You don't have that ability to go, oh, are you okay? Because you feel some tensing to check in. So you really have to be checking in and being very aware of other cues they may give you. And um, also just make sure your partner realizes that he can stop you at yes. any point and have him understand that, hey, I have no feeling in this fake penis that I am wielding, and you need to make sure that you are always okay and nothing is hurting or anything like that. You need to make sure I stop or whatever it might be. Okay. Or go slower or faster or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just... Right. Always communicate. So this is a topic that we can literally talk for days about, and we'll have to do a part two, three, and four probably about it. Um, but I want to end with surprising things that you learned from pegging. Like when you got into it, or maybe when you first, what are some things that you didn't expect? What are, uh, we already mentioned the workout, um, but are there any other experiences that came from it that... You were just like, wow, I, uh, that surprises me, Deanna. Um, I think what was most surprising was how hard the mental stimulation was. Um, how, at, how hot it was? How hard it was. Like it was hard. a, I mean, I don't mean like difficult hard, but impactful, like the force of it. Um, Because, you know, I was like, oh, I'm doing this for him and I just thought it was something that I wasn't really going to get much out of but that was okay because what I was getting out of it was giving this to my partner who was wanting the experience but I almost think I might have gotten just as much or more right. um, pleasure out of it and it was purely like it wasn't really physical like there was nothing really happening to me, um, but yet I still came and I felt a feeling I've never felt before. Euphoric. Yeah, it was the most amazing feeling. Like, uh, And to be clear, it didn't make you feel like your partner was any less masculine. Mm-mm. Let's be really no, clear about that. Absolutely not. But I felt very empowered. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never felt that much empowerment in intimacy before. What about you, Lucy? What are, uh, I had a similar experience as, as, as you did, Deanna, and, and, uh, it was like, it just blows your mind. But also another thing I find very interesting is the fact that when your partner does have an orgasm, as being penetrated, um, as I understand and have been told, it's like three times more amazing mm-hmm. than the regular orgasm that you get. So because that was cool. via their their G-spot. their G spot or what mm-hmm. is also called the P spot. I think that that is probably a small incentive for all you people who don't necessarily are are not quite sold on the on the whole situation yet but as i as i was told the orgasms are at least three times more intense so, so can i can i ask you, you guys this, uh, how often do, do men come oftentimes while being penetrated um is is that a common thing like them coming during anal um penetration Sex. you at least Pegging. for us you need some stimulation of the penis as well Mm -hmm. but and do you do that at the same time do you ever like reach do the reach around Mm -hmm. or if they are riding you it's a lot easier or if your Mm -hmm. boobs are big enough you just kind of throw it in the boob section Mm -hmm. (laughs) deanna (laughs) yes i I would not do that i I have have nothing for you yes (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's okay. So I was going to ask you some different ways to uh, stimulate the penis, but so you just threw that out there. If mm-hmm. they are on top, then you can use your hands or you For do sure. the reach around. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. And or even like a vibrating cock ring. Oh, yeah, that works. Oh, on them. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have to do any work. You just slap it on there and 
Nice. Well, I wouldn't slap it on. I'd slide it on. <laughs> slide it on. There. Yes. Bravo. Bravo. Um, all right. Here is to pegging, guys. I mean. Cheers. 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 If I didn't want to do it before, I definitely do now. We're going to wind this down. Here's what I want to say. We are, as soon as we're done here, going, I'm going to dig through Lucy's bag of trip tricks. I'm going to take pictures. We're going to post them so you can kind of see what some of this equipment looks like. Um, however, if you want to see those pictures and videos or any extras, you're going to have to go to Facebook and you are going to have to join our group, which is Locker Room Talk and Shots Happy Hour. You can find it at our Facebook Locker Room Talk and Shots podcast. Uh, you can also head over to our Instagram page, which is Locker Room Talk and Shots, just to follow us there. And, and we post some fun extras as we go along. And if you want to access our podcast or um, try some of our yummy recipes for yourself, you need to head over to our website, which is Locker Room Talk Podcast.com. Locker Room Talk Podcast.com. If you have questions, comments a topic you want us to cover or you just want to be part of the conversation maybe a guest email me annette a-n-n-e-t-t-e at sheexploreslife.com send me a message i'm ready to chat with you i want your feedback good bad whatever you have to say i'm interested uh to find out um and if you want some more fun reading material, head over to sheexplorerslife.com. Locker Room Talk and Shots is powered by sheexplorerslife.com. And we've got columns like Being Bisexual, Definitely Gay, lots of great sex-centered um, articles that give you tons of information. Uh, so until next time, we'll see you in the locker room. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Ring loop. Bring sexy back in 2024 with hot lingerie, sensual body products, and adventurous sex toys from lovehoney.com, all at a 15% discount with code EXPLORES15. Embrace your inner bombshell with their gorgeous bra and panty sets, baby dolls, and corsets. Then explore your desires with their line of toys that range from vanilla is my flavor to tie me up and call me good girl daddy. And don't forget to treat yourself to a massage candle or essential body oil, all for 15% off with code EXPLORES15 when you shop lovehoney.com. That's right, 15% off on lingerie, sex toys, and more when you shop lovehoney.com and use code EXPLORES15 at checkout. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>